Hey y'all, Irix guy here, and I wanted to do a little virtual set tutorial. Now you can see behind me, I've got my green wall, and it does have a slope in it. And and a lot of people would say, well, if I have a sloped roof, can I still have a green screen, and will it work? Well, you've seen all of my recent videos and how clear the uh, the chroma key effect looks, and I filmed them in front of this. So when I'm filming and I'm talking, I'm in the same frame right now. I can see myself in the Canon XA10 display and I can see, watch, I'm gonna walk out of the frame. Now I'm out of the frame, see? Now my body's completely in the frame, and now I'm gonna walk out of it. And now I'm gonna walk completely out of it. So it's just really cool, and so you can see shadows and all of that, uh, but what I'm gonna do now, uh, just while I'm speaking, just as a demonstration, I'm gonna flip this into, uh, into green screen mode. So we're gonna go somewhere, I'm gonna insert, I'm gonna insert uh, one of my magical backgrounds that I filmed as soon as I snapped my fingers. So see now I'm standing in the exact same place and you can see how crisp the green screen effect is. I'm going to move my hands around. I'm going to move around. You can see how good it looks. It's, it's just a really good effect. And now I'm going to snap my fingers and the green screen is going to go away. And see now you can see I'm still here. Everything's like this. And, and what I want to what I want to talk about, and this is just for, uh, give me a swig of this, oh, Rebel IPA from Sam Adams, good stuff. So what I want to talk about in this is how to do a virtual set, how to do green screen. Now, the demo that I just that I just provided, that's just a simplistic simplistic background that I filmed with a camera, a camcorder on a tripod. And then I repurpose that, that background across multiple videos. Now, if you want to do a virtual set, it's a little different animal. And I'm going to address where you're sitting down, like you're in a, uh, you've got a fake newsroom, you've got a fake desk, but you're actually sitting in a real chair behind a real table, but you need to embed yourself into that virtual set to where you appear as if, like right now, I'm, in the fr I'm front and center but say I needed to be back here in a corner or something to fit into a virtual set. I'm going to show you how to do that in a later video. Uh, in this video, I just want to go into detail about how I just did what I did. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here with my Canon XA10 remote. And you can see I'm just standing behind a... Uh, this right here is a uh, plastic table. And when we do the virtual set, it's a key component because I'll put my chair back here and I'm sitting in front of this green wall. This green wall is just Sherwin-Williams paint. If you have Sherwin-Williams in your area, there's a paint color and you'll mix it up. Be sure to get it in latex. And what, no, you don't want glossy. You want flat. So it's not shiny, it's not glossy. And you want latex paint. And you want a color, it's called straight forward. Like straight, straight ahead, straight forward green. And that's what this is. This is straightforward green from, uh, from Sherwin-Williams Paint Store. And I did two coats on it. I got a gallon can. It was more than enough to do this area. You can see I'm about 6'2". It's, it's over six feet. I mean, it's, it's, probably, uh, it's, it's probably about 12 feet. That, I mean, it goes out of this frame. And it just looks really good. And, and it's even with a little bit of shadows, you can see I'm creating shadows right now. Even with a little bit of shadows, that's not going to uh, that's not going to destroy your chroma key effect. A lot of people assume if there's the slightest amount of shadowing, that's going to destroy it, and that's not the case. The main thing is, yeah, you don't want a lot of shadows, but you need good lighting. Up above, I've got uh, 5,500 5, 5, K daylight white LED bulbs. So that's what's lighting me from above. I no longer have any light lighting to my left or my right. It's just strictly up ahead, up above rather. And it's, uh, it, it does a pretty good job. I mean, you've seen my videos. Something that helps a lot, now I'm on the Canon XA10, which is a prosumer camera. And I'm speaking into a, uh, into a Rode video mic that's connected to that camera. And you can check this video's description. I've got a link to this camera in the, in the microphone as well. Uh, but it's it's a good, it's an affordable entry into the prosumer camera market 
Obviously with prosumer camera you get better optics. You get the ability to use external microphones. If I wanted to do my handheld mic like I normally do, I could. If I wanted to use my wireless lavalier mic, I could use that. But if you just want to use a camera for YouTube that has a built-in mic that's, uh, that's very good video quality and the audio that comes out of the built-in mic, sure you can't add external mics to it or anything like that because it's not a high-end camera. But for just built-in microphone and out-of-the-box high-quality high 1080p video, the Panasonic HC V100M, and you can check this video's description, I've got a link to it as well. It's a few, probably a few hundred bucks and it'll get you up and going in conjunction with a tripod. And I strongly like, recommend this Delica Pro line that I'm using. And the reason I recommend that, and you can find it within this video's description, is that uh, the, the thing that connects to the bottom of the camera, it screws in, you know, it's got a quick release. So if you want to take your camera on and off the tripod, you can just do a quick release, keep that attached to the bottom of the camera. So after you sync your video, after you sync your video with your Mac computer or whatever you use to edit, you simply put it back on top of your tripod and that's good because each time you remove your camera you don't have to realign your tripod. Because that's something that will often deter people from, uh, from, what am I trying to say, from filming a lot more videos because it's such an act of effort each time. You got to, uh, you got to deal with your tripod realignment. You got to put it back up, you know, get it the right height and all that. And something I strongly recommend, I bought two of these pro lines, two of these pro line tripods, because I've got one that I keep in my studio that I'm using right now, and it stays where it is. I use some tape, I mark where the feet go, I never adjust it. It stays where it is. If it falls over, I've got the tape, and I know where to put it back and, and can quickly line it back up. Because with, with green screening, with virtual sets, consistency is key. Because your lighting, if it always remains somewhat the same, it's going to make it a lot easier to just turn on and go. And uh, something else to remember: if you're doing, if you're filming in a studio where you have uh, where you have windows, it's probably going to be in your best effort to cover those windows. Because what will happen is that as the light changes throughout the day, it's going to create. And if it's changing while you're filming, your coloration is going to change. It's going to get darker and lighter. And it's just not going to look professional. So cover any windows that may be in your studio. Ideally, you wouldn't have any outside light in your studio. You would have everything artificial. Uh, that way you can keep it consistent and control your lighting all the time. For video editing, a lot of people say that a PC is okay. And, and I'll, uh, I'm not going to get into the, Mac PC, the PC versus Mac debate. What I'll say is that I grew up building computers. I built DOS computers, I built Windows computers, I built Linux computers, I built FreeBSD's computers and servers, and rack mounts, everything. But I will tell you, when I, when I finally, when OS X became readily available, I switched to Mac and I never looked back. OS X is Unix, it's rock solid, you don't have to worry about viruses, but from a video editing perspective and photography perspective, it's just so nice. Just the way that all of the tools uh, mesh together makes it really easy. Now I did not like, and a lot of people may disagree with this comment, I did not like the previous versions of Final Cut Pro. Before Final Cut Pro 10 I didn't like them because I didn't have professional Final Cut Pro training. So to learn those tools was a little daunting. But what I'll say is that Final Cut Pro 10, when I first started doing my YouTube channel, I just used iMovie, which was included with the, uh, you know, came out of the box with the Mac. And it's perfectly acceptable. But when I purchased Final Cut Pro 10 and I made the jump from free iMovie to Final Cut Pro 10, it was a few hundred bucks, I was able to take my productions to, even a greater le to, to an even greater level. And there's so much more that you can do with Final Cut Pro 10 than you can with iMovie. Uh, you can better refine the chroma key effect. You can use a lot more layers. Uh, you can uh, just really enhance the, uh, the content within the video and then also enhance the way, optimize the way in which you export it. Like all my videos currently, I export in 1080p video sharing services. And it looks really good. It's good video quality, 1080p, but it's not so massive that it takes forever to get to up to upload to YouTube. 
So there's a lot of things. Once you get really seriously involved with this, if you do, you're probably going to want to upgrade to Final Cut Pro 10. I would use a Mac. It's a no-brainer. Even if it's just a basic MacBook Air, you know, the $1,000-ish model, that's perfectly acceptable. If you purchase an inexpensive, uh, you know, three or four terabyte external USB hard drive for 80 or 100 bucks, whatever it may cost. So, I mean, that's, uh, that's what I would do. And, and that's what I use now. I mean, obviously, I use the iMac i7, the most, most powerful model they have, with the 256 flash because the flash based is a lot better than than the fusion or the uh, standard uh, uh, 7200 or 5200 rpm hard drive I forget which which speed they have but I use that and I have two uh, Vantec HX fours <laughs> currently with eight terabytes in each one is the master one's a backup so if, if a hard drive failed I would have a backup of everything and I can max that out to 16 terabytes if I need to but uh, right now, I've just got a little bit over four terabytes worth of video, <laughs> which is a lot. But that, that's the um, that's the virtual set in a nutshell. And like I said, I'm going to go more into like newsroom type sets where you're sitting behind a desk and more advanced uh, virtual sets in, in a future uh, in a future video. But I wanted to get this video out. Because I have a lot of fans that have asked me, you know, what do you use? How do you do this? I want to start a YouTube channel. And like I said, not everybody has to go out and buy the prosumer camera. I mean, someone can just purchase the, uh, as, I, as I use an, as an example, the Panasonic HC V100M, which will probably set you back around a couple hundred bucks. It's well worth it. It's going to be integrated microphone. It's going to sit on top of a tripod. And it's going to be more than sufficient visual quality for a quality YouTube channel production. But if you need to take it to the next level, you need external microphones, etc., that's when you're gonna to wanna to consider prosumer. So again, check this, uh, check this video's description. I've got links to uh, the various equipment that I mentioned. And if you have any questions, I welcome your questions. Shoot me a message, uh, comment on this video, comment on Facebook, go to irixguy.com and send me a message directly and I'll do my best to respond. I'm in this to have a good time. I know I've got thousands of videos and I've got thousands more uh, videos coming soon, but I just want to kind of give back and share with everyone what I've learned, so maybe it'll help you. Uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and share this video, youtube.com forward slash Y'all have a good day.